hip-hop records, this is history in the making. Hello everyone, I just want to welcome you to this incredible story. The theme of it is called My Story and this is where you know, we, we invite people who have an incredible story of the goodness of God. And um, I'm so honoured myself today, I, I'm, a, I'm the senior pastor of a church called Joy Network Church and I'm so honoured that we have Jai with us today and I'm going to invite Jai. So Jai, firstly, thank you for coming today. That's so good. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. I really wanted to come today and give you my testimony. And I wanted my testimony to get out to people because they actually need to hear my story. And for what God's done in my life, I can't thank him enough. And if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be sitting here today. Yeah. So, you know, we're going to start soon, but I'm also so honored to be part of Jai's life as we've gotten to know Jai. He's part of our sound tech live stream. He manages our church stream and we've known Jai for a long time. And so it's an honor to hear his story. And my heart's prayers, you know, we just prayed and we said, Lord, this is not for our own gratitude. We, we want to want this testimony to touch others because there's people out there that, have, that are going through things in life that can identify and will identify with what Jai's been through. And so Jai's going to explain his story to us an incredible story so we, we i'm not going to take over we're going to we're going to just allow you to run with it but right. firstly ja again thank you for coming it, it is an honor to sit with you like this and to share this story ja and thank you for allowing me to do this yeah i, I it's yeah it's, it means a lot really yeah. like because i want to do god's will yeah and i want this to reach people because I know it's powerful. Mm. I know it has something to it. It has substance. Mm. And it's going to reach people on another level. Mm. And people are going to be able to re relate with me on a personal level. Yeah. With my stories. Mm. So, yeah. So, so Jai, I'll just help in, in, you know, just because sometimes it, it's good for people to understand. Because I know you well. Mm -hmm. I've known you for some time. So, I want to ask you about your your birth as a child because we've all come into this world mm -hmm. we've all got a story i know one day i've got a story even i was a miracle birth child but i know your story is incredible mm. and we've known you i've known you since you were a young kid but we'll get into that later yeah can you tell us what happened in your childbirth what what was that like yeah so my actual testimony started at birth so 
right at the very beginning, my, I was a 10 month pregnancy in my mum's womb and my, the doctors were pushing on my parents an abortion because it was such a complicated birth. It was going to be a complicated birth. And everyone thought my mum was having twins, to be honest. Wow. And they were pushing it on my parents hard. Like, and they were, I was going to be a stillbirth. So I was going to be born, but I was going to be dead at birth. So I wouldn't have made it. Mm. But because my parents were brand new Christians at the time, dad was like, no, I'm not going to let that happen. Like, I can't let this happen. Like, we're, we're new Christians. Like, this isn't how it's meant to be. Like why is it meant to be like this like i'm not going to let this happen so my dad stopped that from happening and allowed the birth to happen so god used my dad to actually save me that day and dad said that he was peeking behind the curtain when he saw this um when my mum was having a c-section a cesarean yeah and he was looking above the curtain and then he ducked back down again and then he looked up and then ducked back down. Mm. And he said when he looked up, he saw this big and purple blue thing mm. and he thought it was a placenta. And then dad was waiting and going, uh, where's my son? And they go, oh no, he's actually over there on the table. Wow. And then dad's like, what? Like a bit confused. So he went over and he looked and I was big and I was blue and I was curled up and my hands were curled mm. and I quite a lot of complications like medical c- condition and that mm. and I weighed in and just under 13 pounds and they called me the gentle giant they couldn't actually so fit me in the humidity crib big baby you're huge wow. and then my dad because he was running a business at the time he had to go back to work that afternoon and he came in that next morning to check up on me and my mum so so prior to this, did the, I just want to get this because did the doctors try force abortion? Yeah, they were pushing for an abortion. Wow, okay. So they were, because okay. they didn't, Wow. they thought it was just going to be hectic. Okay, so they, wow. And they were pushing it and Dad was like, no, I'm not going to let that happen. Wow, that's amazing. No matter what the outcome. I'm, I'm going to go with this. So as I was saying, he came in the next morning to the hospital and I was having breathing difficulties and... They had to rush me from Manly Hospital in Sydney to Westmead Hospital on the other side of town. And they put me and my mum in an ambulance and they, f- they were hooking wow. just to get from one side to the other, like the other hospital. And dad said he couldn't get in the ambo with us. So he had to jump in his EH and he had to drive, like try and follow us. And he couldn't keep up and he got lost apparently. And, but God actually guided him to the hospital. And he got there eventually, and he got into the doors and got to the reception, and he goes, oh, my son and my wife just came. And she goes, oh, would he be in the Andrew something ward, or would he be in the Grace ward? And just a few nights prior to that, Dad had been given a book on Grace. Mm. And like someone at church gave him that book, and he thought, oh, didn't really think much of it. So he chucked it up in the cupboard, (laughs) and then... He got up that night and he was just have a glass of water and that and he heard something rattling in the cupboard and he goes, What's that? And he opened the cupboard up and it fell down on on the floor of the book. And he went, Okay, so he picked it up and he sat at the table and he started going through it and about three or four pages in he started crying mm. because God was teaching him about grace. And then my dad goes, The Grace Ward Wow And then I was in the Grace Ward. Wow. And at that time, because of my condition and everything, uh, they found out I had a hole in my heart. And I had Australia's best pediatric cardiologist really, eh? looking after wow. me. And he, was, he looked at my heart and everything. And apparently the day before, there's a, the church my parents were going to, Christian City Church in Sydney, they found out about my condition and we didn't even know. My parents didn't know, no one knew. And apparently it was like 3,000 or something in the congregation that Praying night. Praying for you. Praying wow. for me. And that next morning, the pediatrician came in with a nurse. My mum and dad are in the room and they went to scan my heart with the machine. And then they looked a bit confused, a bit <laughs> baffled. Going, and, they, and they were given like each other's screw eyes, like, 
but and my parents were like, what's happening? <laughs> and then they went out of the room and they got another machine, came back in, they scanned my heart again, then they went out, got another machine, and then scanned my heart again, and then they went and got one of the oldest machines I had, it was like a dinosaur apparently. <laughs> but um, they brought it in, scanned my heart, and there was all these upcoming nurses and doctors that were getting introduced and they were learning and they came into the room and they were showing all the doctors and nurses and then my parents were like, what? what's going on? Mm. And then the paediatrician's like, well, I don't really know how to tell you this, but we actually can't find anything. Wow. We can't find a hole in his heart, nothing. And my parents, my dad's like, it's a miracle. <laughs> and then the paediatrician looked a bit stunned. Like he got, like <laughs> took a step back and he goes, Yes, it is. Wow. And he goes, in my 25 years of my profession, I've never seen anything like this. And he goes, this was your son's heart yesterday with a hole. And then he put up the new scan with the new data and I had a completely brand new healthy heart. And that's just the beginning of that's my testimony. That's a miracle. Yeah, that's just a miracle. It's a miracle. So people, that was a miracle. Yeah. That was a supernatural miracle by God. It was. Because with your condition... A hole in the heart is a significant thing. It is. That could cause issues. Definitely. And if it, that wasn't, like, if it wasn't healed or anything, I would probably have to have four or five surgeries out yeah. my entire lifetime on my heart. Wow. And I don't have to have any heart surgery at all. <laughs> I'm completely healed. And, and uh, not so long ago, you did another test or something. I don't know, for some check-in, and there was still, you said, perfect. Yeah, like I was... Getting my body scanned and everything, and, and heart was good. Yeah, heart was still good. You like had it a was miracle. Yeah, I did through the power of prayer. Amen. And God's hand of grace, as God was preparing your dad and saying, "By my grace." Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's it's so awesome. So, Jar, that's just the start of your life. That's just the beginning. So you're a winner already. Amen. You're a miracle birth. Yeah. Wow. Like that's why I can't stop thanking God because that's I go. Just, Wow, if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be sitting here actually yeah. be able to tell this testimony. So that's just the start. Now, you know, obviously you, you're born, you're growing now into a little kid, mm -hmm. two years old, four years old. Tell us now, what, what was that like in your childhood now, your younger days? Well, that's a bit hard to talk about, but like we all have a past and we all have our childhood and I didn't yeah. have an easy childhood. Like my parents split when I was young and grew up in a dysfunctional family, broken home, and uh, my innocence was ex taken at a young age, like, was exposed to a lot, but I still love my parents, despite what they were going through. Like, I know we all have our ups and downs, our difficulties, our tribulations, our trials, and everything, but I still love them. Like, I've got nothing against them. Yeah, well, what I say in life is, you know, our parents do the best they can. They love us, and mm. we're so thankful. Yeah. But, you know, the enemy has a plan. Oh, he does. And the enemy will use anything to cause problems. But our parents, you know, we love our parents. We honor them. Oh, definitely. Them. So, yeah, you had good parents, but the environment changed. Oh, yeah, I was constantly going oh. from this house to this house. I was, my, I was unstable. And when I was growing up, I had a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, wow. I had panic attacks. Uh, during my schooling, I had, I was bullied, I was humiliated. I went through quite a lot. I didn't yeah. like school, I hated it. Yeah. I went through quite a bit. And then that went on and then into my, how, say... How, uh, sorry to butt in, yeah, but you said something there, the fear. Tell, tell us about, so as a, a young child, you had fear. Yeah, I had fear, like... I didn't like have the belief in myself to be able to do things. I was just, I, I had this fear in me. Okay. I didn't know what it was. Like I struggled to do certain things. I saw all these other people achieving in life. And I was, like, even at a young age, I saw them doing all these things and I couldn't keep up with them. Yeah. And I was comparing myself to other people and going, why am I so different? I feel like I'm outcasted, yeah. like I feel I'm different. I, yeah. I didn't understand. So as a little kid, how old do you think you were when that fear was there? Four years old, eight years old? Yeah, probably five and onwards. Okay, so that started at a young age. Oh, definitely. You? The anxiety and, and mm. that kind of thing. Wow. Yeah. So when you went into school, was that what was the fear and all that kind of, was it still there? 
at that time it yeah, was okay. yeah at that time at school and that like i remember my parents dropping me off and i had like separation anxiety yeah i didn't want to be around I, like i yeah. i couldn't comprehend it yeah like i just i didn't know why i was crying I didn't understand why my parents were leaving me like yeah. but over a time i adjusted and adapted to what environment i was in so i just had to grow with it and adapt and overcome mm. So when you were, so you know, that's, school's quite difficult. I mean, I, mm. I hated school. Yeah. I actually left school at 14 and a half. Mm. I was pulled out. I don't blame you. Yeah, I got pulled out. <laughs> anyway, that's another story. So, yeah. you know, you had difficulties there with also the depression. Mm. So what happened now when, you know, tell us, did you know God? Uh, during the, the, all this childhood, did you know God in some way? Jesus. Um, I knew of God and I knew my parents were Christians like I knew my dad was a Christian but he was just lukewarm and mum sort of fell away a little bit and um, I, I knew of God like a little bit like I didn't know a lot like but I just, yeah, I, I knew of him. Yeah, so you were born in a good family. There was a belief of God, yeah. at least. Like oh, a definitely. belief that there's a God out there. Oh, yeah. But you, you yourself probably didn't have that relationship. No, I didn't God. have a relationship. Okay. But you knew there was a God. Yeah, I knew wow. there was a God, for sure. Wow, so what happened then at your teenage years or even after school? What did that look like? Like, I remember you saying to me, you know, you, you were... You had some life-threatening things. Mm, so you know, car accidents. You you the, you got lured into that whole other world. Yeah. So yeah. So during high school and all that, I was I had bullies and that still, I still, I went through a lot. Like I tried to be good as I could be as a person to others and that, and I was struggling with depression, suicidal thoughts. I was struggling with anxiety still, mm. panic attacks. I didn't know what I was battling. And like, I think it was about 15 onwards, I was sort of exposed to like the soup, oh, yeah, you could say supernatural. Like I saw like the new age and that, like all like in certain things, like I saw my dad go through the Kundalini awakening okay. and I started going down all these different rabbit holes and all these different trails and I started to look into the pineal gland, the third eye. I started explain, trying... Explain that because people don't know what the pineal gland is. So what, the what pineal is gland is a small part that's in your brain and in the new age people try to um, reach enlightenment okay. and they try and open it up okay. and they try and to go into the spiritual realm and I, I like I did psychedelics yeah I'm, I'm not gonna lie I did it and I was smoking weed in that as well and well I know now I wouldn't touch that again yeah but back then I was so invested I was so passionate about it it was weird it was like what is this like mm. and I was seeking for the truth I was actually seeking for the truth and I was looking into science, I was looking into the new age and even Freemasonry, I was looking at like, why do they go that down that path? Okay. And because my granddad's a Freemason and my dad's the first one to stop it. Wow. And then I'm actually the second one in line wow. and I'm the first one to start breaking the chains in the wow. family the, and God's seeing me free. So it's quite a lot did, did you understand freemasonry or were you just, I, just felt a pull to that no because da i remember dad telling me that um some stories okay f through my granddad and dad was dad rejected every time he got invited to the ceremonies or to get um, initiated he would reject it and he said he would tell me the stories and he go, no, it's actually dark, it's demonic and yeah. it's satanic. Yeah. And I was just looking at it to see what they believed in. Okay. I was just trying to see what they w were trying to look at and what they believed as truth. Okay. Like, that's why I was looking at all over the place. So, I mean, let's talk a little bit about this. Would you like to talk about the, the, the realm of New Age? Because yeah. there's a lot of people out there that 
you know, you were struggling. Oh, so was. What the enemy does is he tries to lure us into a false hope. Oh, he does. Because obviously you were seeking some healing in your life or some ex- something. I was. Uh, like, even in that time, because I was in a dark house as well, and I was having sleep paralysis. Really? I was seeing creatures outside this realm. Mm-hmm. They're, they're known as, you can talk about them, like they're known as Bigfoot or Yowies or people talk about these other beings like there's all these other creatures outside this realm and i was being exposed to them like i was having interactions with these things okay and my dad opened that door that it was something that happened in our bloodline and it's opened up even for me and it was crazy so this is something it's almost like a a, a demonic dream sort of thing a sort of all all these things are presenting themselves well they're presenting themselves and we were trying to find out what they are. Okay. So we're starting to go down all these rabbit holes and that trying to seek all information about them. And well, I came back to realize that with the fallen angels and that, and you go back to Genesis and everything with the fallen angels and how they procreated with men and women and beasts and animals and all yeah. those things, that they're Nephilim offspring and they're actually dark and they're demonic. And now I'm... That's why I've come to the realization of, and I've shut that door completely. Mm. But at, that, at those times, I was having interactions. I saw them. Mm. I was leaving, we were leaving food in tree stumps, and they would come back, and there'd be hair in that, in like packages, and we're going, these things are real. So there's the, you experience a lot of spiritual activity. Oh, most definitely. I mean, um, yeah. And so, th- tell us, because people also sleep that sleep. Sleep paralysis. Tell people what that was. I mean, because I, I know what it means, but there's people that don't understand. They could be sleeping at night and go, what's happening to me? Yeah, so I was sleeping, and it's like I woke up in a dream, and then I felt like I was paralyzed. Mm. And I saw a shadow figure, like, as I was on my side, I, I was like that, but I saw it walking towards the door. And as I saw it walking, I just felt this fear and I couldn't speak. I couldn't say anything. I I tried to call out to just to, I couldn't say anything. And I just felt paralyzed. Mm. It was, it was so scary that time. A fearful feeling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I only had it once. Yeah. But, and then my, and my dad also had it and he was right beside me once and he couldn't even touch me. Like he said, He's trying to wake me up, yeah. and he couldn't even touch me. Yeah. Like, so, and I was, it was crazy. So, I mean, this is all because, you know, obviously maybe those doors to the New Age were opened. Oh, definitely. And this is what allowed that sort of thing, you know. I mean, the New Age, you've sort of opened those doors. Mm. I mean, the psychedelics, also people might not understand that. What, what is the purpose of that? What is the aim of doing that what what are you wanting well when you take them because a lot of people go oh, i'm just going on a trip yeah but when they actually take a psychedelic so whether it's mushrooms acid dmt they actually open their pineal gland they activate it okay and they can take themselves out like oh, into the spiritual realm it's like they can escape from this reality okay in a way to say so to speak and and as the purpose to reach enlightenment a lot of people are doing it to fulfill that enlightenment and because they might have done it once they go wow that was amazing so i'm going to go and try it again okay. and see what experience i have a lot of people have similar experiences when they take these drugs and i was even doing yoga and everything at that time and I was because I wanted to work on my body. Yeah. I wanted to get myself flexible and fit. Yeah. And I didn't know. I, I knew that it had some demonic things attached to it, but I didn't know what else to do for my body. Yeah. So I, I, I was doing yoga and that did, as well. And did you understand, like, for the people also that, that, you know, this is good. This is such a good story with you because, mm. you know, this is real life experience. He's not making this stuff up. This no. is really stuff. And it, it, it's quite sad because the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Oh, he does. And obviously he saw a child that was, you know, depressed and anxiety and thought, oh, well, here, lure you in. But with the yoga, a lot of people don't understand it actually goes back to Hinduism, right yeah. back. Well, um, now I see that. Yeah. 
but when I was doing the exercises, I actually felt better. Yeah. But I didn't realize I was actually participating in the demonic activity. Yeah. yeah. I didn't realize what I was opening myself up to. Yeah, a lot of the yogas do come to become at one moment mm. with the deity. Yeah. So, and because yeah. I, I saw Dad go through the Kundalini awakening, yeah. And he had three days of bliss, mm. and he saw different colors, different sounds, yeah. heaps of different things, and. I was starting to even question it myself, going, what is this Kundalini awakening? Yeah. But then God was starting to bring me back. Mm. And he showed me a video of a Christian uh, and on YouTube, and he was actually exposing the Kundalini spirit, yeah. saying it's a counterfeit of the Holy Spirit. And I went, wow, okay. So I showed my dad in that, and then we started to come back into prayer. Wow. So before you go there, because that's yeah, powerful, it is. Um, we could talk hours. I mean, oh, there's yeah. that, that many Christians that actually practice yoga, and I realize, mm. but that's another subject. Tell us, Jai, I mean, you've, <sighs> this is such a good story. Even I'm just enjoying this. Your childhood, there was, there was a, you know, you could say a death, you know, almost death came. Mm -hmm. And then some, you went through some hectic car accidents. Yeah, Tell so. Us, how did that? So one morning, me and Dad were driving in the van and we're coming through the hills of Talabudra and Dad just got this feeling in his, like, just, he's like, I don't know what it is, but we need to pray. Wow. Like, we just need to pray. I went, okay, let's pray. Like, what, and uh, this was 10 minutes prior, not even, like, yeah, nearly 10, five minutes prior. And just got this feeling. So then we started praying. And it was only, it was raining a little bit, like nothing hectic, yeah. like just a few drops on the road. And then we're coming up around this bend just after we are finished praying and everything, and we're coming up, and Dad wasn't going fast, he wasn't over steering around this corner, and we felt the car, vroom, spin. and it spun out. Mm. And as we spun, we came around, and we did a full 180 onto the same side of the road, but opposite direction and we just stopped wow. dead like on the line like and there was a good drop off like a huge like embankment. embankment down there it was a huge embankment it was probably like a 55 degree angle drop oh. and it was a good drop like we, there's trees and all that right there and we were like whoa what was that mm. and dad's a competent driver yeah yeah he's got control yeah and he goes that shouldn't be like it, that shouldn't happen especially in the van mm. sure it's a little bit light in the back but it's not actually possible for that to at that velocity that speed that we swung it was crazy it was like something pushed us so what do you think something physically supernaturally yeah, uh, something supernaturally had to push us to get you into safety yeah, well, just to put uh, push our car like wow. lucky there was no um oncoming traffic because we were just slammed into them like, lucky we're so blessed that there was nothing even coming. Wow. And I reckon if we didn't pray, we would have still gone over that embankment. So are you saying something supernatural you think pushed you in yeah, out of I've, danger? Yeah, I, I don't wow. know. Wow, well, it has to be. It has this. to be. <laughs> like, I've, I, there's something pushed us for sure, but it was crazy. Isn't that amazing? It is. And then wow. that, um, that same van, because it became my van, and I was driving it, to work one morning and I was only five minutes down the road and I was coming around the roundabout and I had smoke in that coming out through the wind, uh, the, sorry, the steering wheel and I went, oh that's not good, what's that? Like I was winding down the windows and that and then it was starting to like bunny hop the car. Wow. So I had to drop it a gear and then get to the side of the roundabout but I was just out of the way so the cars could get past and I was sitting there and I went, I turned the car off and then I was like, okay. So I got out of the vehicle, got underneath, like underneath the bonnet and was having a look like I was on the ground. Huh. I was like, I can't see anything. So then I got back in the car and went to turn the ignition again. I went, actually, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to get back and have another look. I don't know why. I just had a second look. You just had that feeling. Yeah, I just had a feeling. Wow. I, had a, I had another look. And then, I re and then I got under the car and looked again and I saw a huge puddle of petrol and wow. one of my hoses had been like split and I went oh that's not good that's not good yeah. so then I got my nan and pop on the phone and my pop was just they just lived over the hill so then they came down and just said to me um undo your battery and everything quickly and I said okay and that NRMA the fire brigade come out 
and one of the firefighters said to me, if you've kept driving, your car would have blew up. And, and if you had started it again? Like if I started it and had that a little bit of a kick with the ignition and the battery was on, we would have gone kaboom. I would, just, I would have been up in flames. The actual petrol was... Yeah, there was petrol pouring out on the road. So, so they had to put all this um, safety um, stuff on the road to yeah. get rid of the petrol and that. But yeah, he said if you just kept driving and that, it was blew up. I mean, I see that as a miracle mm. because the fact that you got out the car and looked under, mm. that's abnormal. And do you want to know something else? It was on Halloween. <laughs> I was like, oh, of course it's on Halloween. Like any other day? Like, yeah. Full moons, Halloween. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what, what are the chances of that? If my car didn't start, I would never get under and look at it. I'd open the bonnet and go, what's going on? I mean, that's yeah. just strange in itself that you went under and go, whoa. Yeah, I know. Like, and sure, it had a little bit of a characteristic, the car, like it was on its last legs, like it was <laughs> going, still, yeah, but still. You could have been dead. Yeah, I could be dead. So, Ja, I mean, this, this, that was a miracle. Yeah, Let's it was. Let's face it, man. <laughs> uh, one day well, you can sit and ask me questions. I've got some stories too, but okay, this is sweet. so good for you guys to listen to. Really, there's people out there that, that will hear this, but let's go now and, and talk about, you know, doing this. We've just spent so much time. I mean, this won't even be enough with all that we oh, have. But I could just talk for hours. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk now because this is a huge part. Yeah. I mean, this is like massive. God had a pre-plan already. Mm. There's this death wish that's been on you yeah. from birth. Mm. The birth, the car accidents, we'll get into more, but... You came back to God. Something, well, we know the Lord drew you back. I mean, yeah. this, this is powerful. Yeah. So tell us now, how did you come back to God? I mean, I knew you. Yeah. I knew your dad. Yeah. Because I'm a surfer. He's a surfer. I knew you as a kid. Mm. I knew you as a little kid. And even I'm shocked. I'm like, yeah, you're in our church. What <laughs> happened, man? How did you come back to God? Because one more thing before you go on. This is mm. very good. This building used to be a surf factory. Yeah, it did. And when we were renovating this building, you came in on the first day with your dad because we did an advert mm. saying we were going to give away boards. Yeah. Do you remember? I do. And we got a board off the too. <laughs> you got a board. <laughs> yeah. You guys came because we were giving boards away. Mm. And that was the first day that we wanted to get rid of all the stock. Yeah. That's when I saw you. Before that, God drew you somehow. So tell us how you came back, man. <laughs> well, so, because I was, I was on Facebook and that, and me, like, because we we're just um, coming back to prayer and everything. And we go, no, we've got to put God first in our life. Wow. So then, well, okay, because my dad's had all these miracles, all these testimonies himself in his own life. And he goes, no. Prayer is the key to the day and the lock of the night. So we started praying and that, getting back into the, uh, like, and trying to get our life on track, go mm. back towards God. And I just felt a, like God drawing me. And because I was depressed in the new age, yeah. I, I felt like this isn't getting any better. Like, surely things can't get any worse. Like, so then we started watching your videos, how you did the little Q&As on Facebook with your brother Cell, mm. and you just sit there and you had boards like this <laughs> and behind you. And then we're like, okay, so then we started tithing. And because we have tithing testimonies of, as well. So we're like, okay, let's start tithing. And we start even see blessings in the tithing. And then we were tithing to you every week. And we started to see a financial abundance in little areas and just protection and just heaps of little things. Wow. Like all these things started to get better. Wow. Like, sure, we had attacks at times, mm. but they were getting less and less and less. Okay, so just quickly put a picture. So you weren't going to church. No. You were watching our church stream. Yeah. But then you were, you were tithing to the ministry. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. And then well, we heard that your church was getting opened here. Like we heard about that. And like you said, we came and saw you That's when you were right. demo, demo. doing the demo. Yeah. So when you, we, we came for, I think, once or twice, me and my dad came. And then I started coming by myself afterwards. 
and then I tried to come on a regular basis and then it just became more and more. Wow. I remember that. You, mm. So, I mean, you were, guys weren't coming to church for how long do you think were you watching? Uh, we were watching for a few months. A few months? I th yeah, I'd say a few months. Wow. And so, I mean, so the Lord drew you mm. to watch this us yeah. or the church and then you came to church one day. Yeah. I think I was overjoyed. <laughs> I said, Char's in church. Yeah. And that was the start. It was. was it was it, the start. It, was it in this building? Uh, so I've it, been to my nan's church prior, like okay. when I was growing up, and that was at Crumbin. And I've, I went there on and off. Oh, I didn't go much. I just went every now and then. Okay. As a kid? As a kid, yeah. Okay. And they had like the, um, okay. the kids club and all I that. I understand that. But then... But this is where truly, you were fully like... This is where I fully came to church wow. on my own decision and went, okay, like I want to come and check this out. And it was new to me. Wow. Like I didn't know no. what I was up for. I didn't know. But as I came more and more, I felt more loved, more cherished. Everyone was so nice to me. Everyone's so encouraging. So we're not these wacko Christians. <laughs> no, not at all. Like, and then... And I, and I felt a desire, like, because I got baptized with you guys. Yeah. And I felt a desire to get baptized. I was like, no, I want to be on fire for God. Mm. I don't want to be lukewarm. Yeah. I don't want to be a cold Christian. Wow. I'd rather be on fire for him. So you really made in your mind you want to commit to this. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Wow. I just had something in me, like, we're getting to some pretty hectic times in this history right now, like in our lives, and we're seeing it play out around us. Mm. We can actually see it. We see the casual society coming into play. We see the earthquakes, the tsunamis. We see all these technologies being used to modify the weather. So we're you, seeing so much. So you were also, you know, the Lord was using all of that mm. to draw you back to him. Mm. And you noticed, hey, hang on. I need to get my life right with the Lord. The world is also not going to rescue us. We can't mm. trust anyone. And so this drawing Yeah, I came. just felt something pull me. I mean, I remember the day you walked in and I knew in my spirit, I knew mm. that you were going to stay. I knew it. I thought he's going to be part of the furniture. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am now. <laughs> and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. And um, it's almost like for me, because there's a relationship here. Yeah. We, we do know you guys as a family. But I knew when you walked in that you were going to be here. And you haven't missed a Sunday. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've missed one. I might, oh, actually, maybe one. Yeah, but, but I mean, But I've been here 99% of the time. Wow. So I, I love it. It's so good. <laughs> so, I mean, wow, it's just such a big story. We could sit here for hours. So you've oh, come, you came back to God. Yeah. Um, you got baptized. You even did the discipleship course. Yep, I sure did. I mean, you did all that. Yeah, I enjoyed doing all those courses, the discipleship course, and that taught me about the new foundations of a brand new Christian yeah. and got my life back into some structure and that order, helped. it helped a lot yeah. because it brought my beliefs out of the new age and all that stuff and all these other ideologies and beliefs that I had and brought me back to God's word. Yeah. I mean, that, that helped you. You, oh, you, most you definitely. did well. So, okay, you've, geez, what a story. You've <laughs> come back to God supernaturally. Yeah. God's drawn you. But even as you joined this church, because how long have you been here now? Around uh, Come, I think it's just about two years. Two think, years? I think, yeah, two years. Wow. Anyway, so <laughs> you came, you joined, yeah. and then even even returning, there was still some personal... Oh, definitely. Talk about the... So there's still struggles. Talk about the, the suicide, the depression, because this was intense. Yeah, so even being a brand new Christian and, that, and coming into the church, I still had certain struggles. I still had the suicidal thoughts, still had depression, still had panic attacks, anxiety, still had a little bit of fear. Mm. Like at times, like uh, I was in a relationship for nine months or so, yeah. and uh, that didn't pan out, and I, I have no control of that, yeah. like to say, but I wish you the best, like, 
I hope she's doing well. Yeah. Um, I've got nothing against her. Yeah. Like, don't blame her at all. Yeah. Uh, she doesn't blame me. Yeah. I forgive her. Everything. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. But um, but during that time, I was I had these suicidal thoughts and that, and they would ramp up mm. like they would just go through the roof. Wow. And I had these voices in my head going, just end it. Just get a knife and just end it like and one day I was up on top of Fingal Headland and I was this close Whoa. this close to getting a run up and launching off the headland sure. and I saw the rocks below and I was like going, okay how do I do this like calculating where I'd land like I was it was going through my mind like these things were like just do it come on just do it and then the, but there was something in me going no don't do it don't do it don't do it like you can't leave your girlfriend behind you can't leave your dad behind you can't leave your family behind you can't leave the church behind like everyone cares about you mm. but they had these thoughts wow. that were ramping up going just do it like who who's going to care if you go like I just I didn't feel worthy I didn't I just felt okay. I'll end it now, and I had I was this close mm. just to run up and launch. Like I was almost that close, and then I was doing an electrical apprenticeship. So before we get there, yeah, I don't sure. want to burn because this is, I mean, this is just you know, people you don't realize how close this is. Yeah, oh, yeah. And I've ministered to people who've actually jumped off buildings mm. and survived that, like a two-story building. Mm. and people that have just cut themselves and I've ministered to all these kinds of people but when you said this close oh yeah that was a turning point there was there was like oh the, I'm all in or nothing like I'll just go all the way like I don't care if I hit the rocks if I, if I hit the water then so be it but wow. if I hit the rocks let it be it was intense it was so intense I it's so hard when you're struggling with your mental, like this mental battle. Mm. Like, it's all where the battle is. It's in your mind and the enemy uses it against yeah. you. Yeah. So, there was two voices. Mm. Three voices, actually. God was trying to get to talk to you and say, don't do it. And then there's another voice that was just tormenting you. Mm. And that's the enemy. Yeah. And then my emotions were coming up and I was crying and I was wow. had all this pain and I was like, I didn't know how to process it. Do you, do you think that you still had a choice in that moment? Almost definitely. So it just shows, eh? As much as what the enemy tries, there's still that choice. There's still that choice. You have that choice to either accept it or to walk away. Wow. But I was so close. I was... Yeah, like, if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be sitting in this chair talking to you. What I wouldn't be able to get to these people. What a miracle. And then, like I said, I tried an electrical apprenticeship, and it's hard because of my condition and that. Yeah. And, I, and I tried to adapt and overcome, yeah. but the, the suicidal thoughts were still there, yeah. the depression. Yeah. And I was up, like, climbing ladders onto two-story roofs as we were working up there. And I had these voices in my head again going, just jump off, just wow. just jump, just launch off. Like, who cares? Like, just jump. And then I'd have voices in my head when I'm driving the work you. Yeah. I'm driving it and I have these voices just pull into oncoming traffic, pull in front of that bus. And I even had feelings like I was getting drifted like towards buses when I was driving at times like it was trying to pull me like gravitate me so I'd crash into a bus mm. or into oncoming traffic or a truck like it was constant wow that's intense mm. I mean that's that's full on yeah you know and this is a reality of what happens it is and I mean those aren't schizophrenic voices no you're not schizophrenic you, not you've got at all. No psychosis <laughs> you, 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 you mentally sound yeah i am and um that's the enemy you're really trying to take life because look at all the death oh there's heaps of the it. attempts of death but god brings life amen isn't that amazing <laughs> he does that god has the final say mm. so i mean you went through all this even in your job and even if your parents are watching they probably don't really have don't really know because you know i'm a parent and a lot of things we don't know a lot of times what our children are going through and the fact that you're suffering these things it's intense mm. eh? oh it is and this is recent yeah it's recent and um 
You, so you sat in the church with all this uh, for a long time. I did. And um, talk about the freedom now. I mean, talk oh, about... Here we go. This is the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, like it's... This, this could go on for 50 hours, but... Oh, yeah, we could talk three days if we wanted to on this, but yeah. I want to share quickly as a pastor's side before we get in this. Mm. You pretty much sat in the church for about a year and two months, was it all? Yeah, about a year and a bit. So, yeah, I'd say about a year and two months or three. Three Before months. any kind of intense ministry. Yeah. And um, that's a picture in itself that people need to also sit under correct teaching. Oh, most definitely. They need to build themselves. They need to learn. And that year, I think you were growing. Oh, most definitely. God was planting me in this church. And I would be reading the Bible and God would speak me to speak to me through the scriptures and he goes, I've planted you here, mm. stay here. Mm. And he'd start to speak to me more and more in little voices. Even though I had the demonic attacking me yeah. and it was hard to distinguish between those voices at times because yeah. you have to have discernment. Yeah. So you gotta learn between the subtle voice of God and the loud voices of the enemy. So then you start to distinguish. But God was saying, just be here. So I was in this church and I just felt Felt like no, keep coming, just keep coming. Like something was drawing me here. And sure, I wasn't. I'm not perfect. Yeah. I'm not close to perfect. Yeah. And I want people to understand that you don't have to be perfect mm. to come to God. Mm. You can come it as you are. Yeah. Carry on. That's that's brilliant. Like, yeah, you don't have to. You can be. Yeah, you can be in drugs. You could be in addiction. You could be in a broken family. You could have everything going against you you could be in the occult but god meets you where you you're at and then he'll start to change you he'll transform you mm. he'll mold you into his image mm. he'll actually transform you completely he'll refine you through the fire he'll and sure it can be painful it's not easy it's not an easy walk it's not just like blase walk in the park but it's so worth it, mm. so worth it. From where I've come from to where I'm now, I'm so blessed. I'm so happy to actually be sitting here to tell you people that what I've been through and where God's brought me out of to where I am today, if it wasn't for God, like I said, I wouldn't be here wow. at all. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. But what you're saying there is really powerful because... There needs to also be a faithful commitment on our side, on the desire mm. to follow God. Oh, definitely. And I think the Lord at sometimes allows a person to sit for a little bit mm. in church, to get to know God, to see your dedication, you know, and this is a big part of it. You, yeah. you really said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to serve God. Yeah, most definitely. I'm going to put all in. And I've that, experienced that side of the world. Yeah, I have. Like. Like I said, I was out at clubs, I was drinking, I did drugs, I was all part of that. I was mm. trying to get accepted into this world, but that's not life, that's mm. not living. I've actually found what, where I am now is actually living, it's actually life, it's more abundant, it's actually, it's peaceful, it's mm. happy. Mm. Like, I'm not trying to fill that void inside, yeah. I'm not... That everyone's trying to fill that void and they're seeking it through, say, sex, drugs, rock and roll, dru whatever it is, the occult. But that's not going to fill that void whatsoever. Yeah. The only one that will truly fill that void is Jesus. What I've heard from people that have gone into, you know, New Age and alternative religions is they say, you know, you, you, you go into these healing things like you did and yes, it's temporal. Mm. So in that moment, you're feeling a, a little bit of Peace, yeah. but then it, it's short-lived. Oh, definitely. And then it's like you've got to go back again and back again. Where's God? It, it drew, draws you in. It's like yeah. a trap. Yeah. Where's God completely filled that void? Amen. Yeah, he did. Wow. Yeah, most definitely. Um, and, and I know this is a, a, an important thing too. Even though the Lord drew you here, there would, there would have had to have been the enemy trying to say, leave this church or... Or walk away oh, yeah. from God. Definitely. I'll be driving my car over the bridge <laughs> and I'm like, say, 15 minutes away. And as I'm coming, there's two ways I could go. <laughs> and these voices are in my head going, oh, just go surfing. Just go. <laughs> don't even go to church today. Like, 
you don't want to go there. And then I'd be coming around the corner and I'd just be coming towards church and these voices are in my head going, I hate this place. Like, get me away from this place. Like, I hate it. And I'm like, good, well, you're coming, I'm coming back in every time. I mean, important thing too, if we backtrack again, we're talking about, you know, um, you know, coming to church, but an important thing, what you said there, it doesn't matter what you're going through, just God accepts you. Amen. And I think a big thing is people think, well, I'm not ready yet to come. I'm, a lot of people say that to me as well. I'm not right with the Lord. I'm not going to go until I'm ready. I mm. say no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, even if you've sinned or whatever, you need to come to church. Amen. It shouldn't stop you. It shouldn't stop you at all. Yeah. It sh like... I understand how you might feel like you might go, I, I've I messed up, I've done yeah. all these bad things, I'm, I'm not worthy of it. Correct. I understand that, but God loves you despite that. Yeah. And it's not about religious traditions, it's not about sinner's prayer, yeah. it's not about just, I'm a religious organization. It's actually a personal relationship with Jesus. That's, that's what it truly yeah. is. It's, that's the key. God wants to know you. He, and he wants us and we need him. Yeah. We're his children yeah. and he saved us. He's given us another chance. He's redeemed us. Mm. He's given us a priceless gift called salvation. Yeah. He went and died on a cross for us for the remission of our sins. He didn't have to do that. Yeah. He could have given up and gone, screw it. You, you don't deserve this. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to save humanity. Yeah. But he actually went through with it so he could save not just me, not Hilton, but everyone. Yeah. Even the person sitting behind that camera. Yeah. Like, he's, that's what he's done because he's such a great, uh, yeah. gracious and merciful and faithful God. So, I mean, that's powerful. I'm, I'm, there's going to be people out there that are going to love this because it's... it's John, now let's talk that the... <laughs> <laughs> the death, the suicide. Yeah. Um, you eventually got ministry from myself and we did, we prayed deliverance on you. Yeah. And uh, we dealt with stuff there, which we will do in another video, but because mm. it's, that can take hours again. But yeah. if you didn't have that, if you didn't have the opportunity to actually get prayed for in that kind of area, meaning driving out these forces that were working against you, mm. What? Oh, I'd be so lost. I'd probably, I'd probably be dead, or I'd probably be out in the world again. And the enemy would try and lure me on all these different tangents. He'd probably try and keep me into the new age, or wherever it was, or try and take me down all these slippery slopes away from here. And I'm so grateful for the deliverance, even because I've seen the results and it's not an easy walk no. deliverance yeah. it's like I said it's refining through the fire it's a process but it's so worth it like today I don't suffer with suicidal thoughts I don't suffer with that anxiety I don't suffer with those panic attacks I don't suffer with that depression I'm actually free of it sure the enemy might come in at times and try and speak negatives and lies and deception into my mind but I actually can just decipher between his voice and God's voice and it's getting easier yeah. like I can start to find like I've got clarity now yeah. and I've got the truth yeah like God set my he's opened my eyes he's opened my ears to the truth like it says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free John 8 32 my favorite scripture yeah so is it mine <laughs> yeah <laughs> But so, I mean, that whole suicide thing is gone. It's gone completely. <laughs> like I was working days on end and I'd have oh. thoughts of just ending it, thoughts of just even day-to-day -day life. Like I just couldn't handle it. Wow. These thoughts were just toxic. They yeah. were constant. Like yeah. I was either thinking lustful thoughts or suicidal thoughts or murder mm. or just all these abominations yeah it was like my mind was just full of it but what you said there's very important for the viewer mm. is it's not about the deliverance it's about the walk with God it is and that what you said the key it's a journey it is it's a journey. not an easy journey um, and I think where people go wrong is they they look at this as a quick fix but 
you are a classic example of just following the Lord. Amen. You didn't look at that as your solution. It was, I need to follow God mm. and put my faith in Him. Oh, most definitely. And, and what, He's been increasing my faith ever since. He's been growing me, maturing me, changing me. I feel the sins of my old self are just falling off me. Yeah. Like those desires are gone, the carnal fleshly desires. Yeah. They're just melted off me. And... Sure, the enemy will try and make, make you backslide at times. He'll try and pull you off the path, but God will always bring you back. Yeah. And it's it can be scary also at times because you're going like, um, there's a spiritual force at play. You've got God and yeah. you've got the devil. You've got two principalities that are fighting for your soul and you've got to choose what one you want to give your soul to. Yeah. And that's like, like, I couldn't thank God enough. Yeah. Like, if it wasn't for God, I would be dead. Yeah. Or I would be off on the wrong road. I would be down doing the wrong things. And I'd be in a worse position than I was in the beginning. What a, what a testimony to the goodness of God. Amen. I mean, what a powerful story. And uh, we're so excited to be part of your life. We really are. And you are now part of the furniture. Amen. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> You're a sound guy. You look after the sound. and I love doing that. So it's been two years until we've actually sat down and actually said, you know what, let's share your story. Yeah, it's been two years. Wow. What a story. But I, I wanted to put my story on a back burner for a bit and allow more to happen to show more people yes. like what God's done in my life. But it's actually a perfect time right now to show people what I've come through from the very beginning, from my birth to where I'm right now. Yeah. Like, it couldn't be any better. And the story continues. We're forever growing. Oh, most definitely. There's still things we're working out. There's still yep. things that God's dealing with. Amen. And I think, I think that's, that's the, the main thing, is a lot of people think... Um, Look, God has, uh, Jesus has uh, done it all on the cross, therefore it's automatic. Mm. Everything's automatic, but it's not because when God even told the children of Israel, see, I've set the land before you, mm, I've given it to land. you, just go in and possess it. Yeah. So I think a lot of us think, well, it needs to be just automatic. But yeah. you, you know what it's taken. Well, yeah, we've been conditioned in that to believe like, because even people in the new age or wherever or wherever they go, they go, oh, I need that quick fix. Yeah. But it's only temporal. Whereas God's taking you through a journey yeah. where he has to put you through trials and tribulations, but only for your benefit. It's only for your benefit. It's out of love. It's out of disciplining you. It's out of true like mercy for your soul it's gracious yeah like if you if you're a parent and you want to tra train your child up you don't want them going off the rails yeah you want to train them up to be the best of their ability and sure they might go off on tangents at times you but you bring them back yeah you you try and chastise them and discipline them but you only love them and want the best for them yeah and that's the same with god and us yeah so ja thank you that's all right. Uh, do you want to talk about anything else or? Um, I don't know. I've, I think I've covered quite a lot. You, I mean, you're a walking, breathing testimony. So. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> like, I love being part of this church. Like, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. I love our team. I love you. Like, I, I appreciate everyone. I appreciate the support. Like, because if God didn't put me here, he didn't plant, if he didn't plant me here, I'd be so lost. I'd be, uh, yeah. Well, we just look at the, the, the complete supernatural work of God. Amen. That Jesus knew exactly where you needed to be. He drew you to the exact place. Mm. And I want you to tell the people out there, this is for the purpose to tell those out there, with God, all things are possible. Amen. N Matthew 19, 26. We serve a God that makes the impossible possible. Yeah. He's not just some little God. He's a God that created everything. He created heaven and earth and hell. And He created everything. And He wants to have a relationship with you. Despite what you've been through. Mm. He loves you. He gave you a free will so you could choose if you wanted to serve Him or not. He didn't want to 
force it upon you. You didn't have to. Yeah. Like he wanted to give you that choice whether you wanted to accept him or not. And he doesn't want you to perish. Mm. He doesn't want me to perish. He doesn't want Hilton to perish. He wants you to be saved. He wants you in heaven with him after this life. A lot of people go, oh, well, you only get one life. May as well make the most of this one. But that's not true. After this life, we actually go to heaven or hell. There's actually a choice. And this life is like a tiny grain of sand. Yeah. And you look at eternity and it's like looking at the desert. And that's scary. Like, you go, where am I going after this life? Yeah. And after having all these spiritual experiences and God showing me, opening my eyes and everything, I go, okay, no, I want to follow God. I want to follow Him. Yeah. There's a healthy fear because I love Him. And if it wasn't for God, like I said, I wouldn't be sitting here. Yeah. And my testimony isn't for my praise. It's not for my glory. It's for Him. Amen. It's for truly God. Yeah. Because I want people to go, wow, look how God worked through him. If he can do that in my life, he can do it in yours too. Amen. 100%. Amen. And uh, that's, that's why we are so happy to have you to share this because we know, and you know, mm. there's people out there that have been through similar things yep. that don't know where to go. And um, they, let me tell you, life is short. It is. He was on... His life could have ended like that. It could have. Life is so short. It's one of the things. And we're in these end times. We're in the end times of man. And we look at the Bible and the prophecies, and they're all coming into fruition. Like, we can see it all playing out. And I know some people can't see that, but we, uh, even non-believers and non-Christians, they're going, what's happening in the world? Like, what's happening? Like, what should we do? Like, should we go off grid? Should we sell everything? Like, something's happening. Like, why is, why is the world getting worse? Yeah. Like, we can all see it, whether yeah. we're on a biblical standpoint or from another standpoint. We can all see that the world is in a chaotic mess. Yeah. And I'm suggesting, not even suggesting, I'm recommending and encouraging you to accept Jesus. Amen. Because... I don't want to see you perish. You don't deserve to perish. And God doesn't want you to perish. And especially in these critical times, yeah. He's trying to wake people up to the truth and give it to them. So what, Jai, we just want to end you and say, I don't know where, who is out there, but there's an opportunity to have a think about your life. And Jesus is willing to accept you no matter what. It doesn't matter who Amen. you are, where you're going, where you are right now. Jesus is more than happy to receive you. Oh, he is. Yeah. And if you're by yourself and you're watching this, I encourage you to go into your room by yourself in a quiet area. Put your phone away, no distractions, and say, Lord, if you're truly real, come to me. Please let me have a personal experience with you. Like, show yourself to me. And you watch what happens. You'll actually have an encounter. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you watch, just, yeah. I mean, that's, that's important because you said earlier, I wanted the truth. I did. I so wanted the truth. If you generally deep down actually want the truth, I believe God will reveal himself to you. Amen. He yeah. will. Yeah. And if there's two or three of you together, then yeah. even better because it says, for where two or three gather, he shall be amongst them. And prayer's effective Amen. when you've got two or three of you together. Yeah. Even more people, yeah. it's more effective. And God will come in. He'll show himself. Allow the Holy Spirit to come in. Just surrender and go, okay, I push my ego aside. I push my thoughts aside. I just surrender right now. And just accept him. And you watch what happens. You'll see a difference. You'll see. Well, Ja, thank you. That's all right. For coming today and... Uh, God bless you for watching. Bye-bye. God bless you.